So here's the big question. How do you sell heavy duty parts in a digital world? That's the question, and this is the place where you're gonna find the answers. My name is Jamie Irvin, and we are live in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to another edition of Jamie Irvin Live. We are live streaming today. It is August the 5th, 2021. I am happy to be here to talk to you today about how to sell heavy duty parts in a digital world. Today, we're going to focus on how to organize your pitch, how you put together a pitch deck to engage in a virtual sales call. And uh, we're going to get into that. But before we do, this is a live broadcast. So if you would like to comment or ask a question, please love to have your feedback. I would really appreciate that. And as I said today, we're going to talk about how to create a pitch deck for virtual sales calls. But this live stream is actually, uh, what's the word? It's uh, not promoted. It is sponsored by the Heavy Duty Parts Report, our weekly podcast. You can follow for free by going over to Heavy Duty Parts Report. Dot com, And we appreciate you to uh, go over there and check out the heavy duty parts report. So let's get into the subject at hand. Definitely with the pandemic, a lot of salespeople who never had to do a virtual sales call before got their first opportunity. And since then, over the last 15, 16 months, whatever it's been, they have been really learning how to to sell using this virtual video conference tool, whether it's Zoom or whatever you're using. One of the things that I consistently see, whether in the offline world or even in the digital world, is I see that there is a formula that people are using to try to sell heavy duty parts in the trucking industry. And the formula is basically this. It starts off with uh, talking about your company, the many years that your company has been in business, the years of experience that all your people working at that company have. You know, we've been in business for 75 years and we have 300 years of combined experience. Then they talk about the products, features, and benefits, the high quality parts. They talk about competitive prices and then they talk about great service. And salespeople and marketers seem to think that that this information albeit relevant to a degree, is some sort of differentiation in the value proposition. Well, I can tell you right now that it absolutely does not differentiate you in any way because these things are barriers to entry into the business as opposed to actually something that differentiates you and your company. Think about it. If you didn't have experience and you didn't know what you were doing, If you didn't sell quality parts, if your prices weren't competitive and you had poor service, would you be in business for very long? Probably not. And the landscape is more competitive today than it ever has been before. So there are, there are companies that have spent the last 20, 30 years developing themselves into a company with a lot of experience, high quality parts knowledgeable people, competitive prices, and great service. And if you didn't have those, you're not going to be able to compete with them. So so that is not going to differentiate you. And that doesn't really even engage a prospect when you're doing a digital or virtual sales call. I mean, if that's the information that you presented, you've probably sat on a few of these virtual calls where the first five minutes, the person's just talking about their company and, you know, you can almost, you can almost predict what the next slide's going to be. So how do you create a pitch deck for a virtual sales call that's going to actually help you to sell more parts? Well, there's two things I want to talk about. Last week, we talked about the content formula that works every time. We talked about narrative storytelling and the structure in which to put information. And when you are selling, you want to be engaging and you want to be compelling and you want to get people's attention and you want to move the needle towards selling product. And so there is a formula to putting your pitch deck together that is going to help you to be a better salesperson. And if you master it, it's going to help you to significantly move the needle when it comes to your revenue and how much you do in sales. Okay, let's talk about it. Number one, get rid of your 40 plus slide deck. Get rid of it. 
one of the biggest mistakes I see with pitches and and slide decks and and tools used in virtual sales calls is they're way 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 too long. You're trying to cram in A to Z every bit of information you can about your company and your products, and that is the fastest way to put people to sleep. So if you've got 20, 30, or 40 slides, right away, I can tell you, you got a problem. You know, it's one thing to put together educational content, but even then 40 slides is way too much. You want to put people to sleep? That's how you're going to do it. So as a salesperson, you want to get to the point and you want to be able to communicate the right information in the right order. So I recommend that you put a hard limit to the number of slides that you use. And, and if you're watching this and you're a salesperson, I want you to, to go ahead and, and try this. And oh, Martin, thanks so much for watching. I'm so happy to, to get a comment from you. Nice to hear from you. It's been a long time, my friend. Thank you for tuning in. So Martin, uh, we're talking about how to create a pitch deck for a virtual sales call. And I, I want people to commit right now to reducing your pitch deck down to 10 slides. And that includes the introductory slide and the conclusion slide with your contact info and, and that kind of stuff. So that means that we're going to condense our message down to eight slides. Now, what is on those eight slides? Well, so the, the first slide after the introductory slide is where you have to get people's attention. Let's wake up the people, the prospect who is expecting you to talk about yourself and your company and the years of uh, that you've been in business and all of that. That is where you want to start. You want to start off with a big idea. You want to start off with something that is directly pointed at your prospect. In other words, don't talk about yourself. Talk about your prospect. Talk about them and present them with something that is going to get their attention. Brian is uh, watching from HDA Truck Bride. He goes, this is absolutely on point. Thank you so much, Brian. So the first thing is we got to get their attention. And I want you to imagine the frame around a picture. What is the purpose of that frame other than just putting it on the wall? Isn't it to draw the person's eye into what's inside the frame and to ignore everything outside the frame? That's what this first, this first introductory thought should do. You want to frame a single idea, a single thought. You want to put your prospect's attention on one thing because they, they're busy. They got things going on. They're worried about their business and the thousand things they have to do today. They're worried about their personal life and everything going on there. So you need them to give you a little bit of attention and you want to frame one thing. Then you want to deepen their appreciation of the problem that is associated with this one idea, right? You want to take them into, this is the thing I want you to think about. And now I want you to really think about the problem associated with this, the problem that you are experiencing on a regular basis. In heavy duty parts, we're going to be talking about things like uh, maybe it's, it's unscheduled downtime. Maybe it's going to be the, the high cost of, of repairs if maintenance isn't done regularly. But whatever it is, we need them. We need them to focus. And then in the next slide, we need to talk about a big problem and we need to deepen their appreciation of that problem. So we need to demonstrate our knowledge of what's going on in their world. This replaces all the talk about yourself. See, when people talk about themselves at the beginning and they talk about what they are um, you know, doing and who their company is and what they're really trying to do is say, hey, Mr. Customer, we know what we're doing and we can solve your problem. Instead of that, what I want you to do in that next slide when you're talking about the problem is I want you to demonstrate your competency and your knowledge. And this is going to make your customer go, this person really seems to know what they're talking about. This company really seems to know what they're talking about because they have a deep understanding of the problem that I face in this specific area. And so it actually achieves what you want to achieve when you're using that other approach, but it does so in a much more simplified, concise way, and it gets right to the point. Once you have explained 
to them and demonstrated to them that you get their situation. You've got them focused on one thing. You, they understand the problem. Now you want to go even further. You want to deepen their appreciation even further by demonstrating the economic impact of that problem. Now, sometimes it's the economic impact of failing to solve the problem and take action. So, so in essence, what is the economic impact of, of doing nothing? Sometimes it's explaining to them the economic impact of the options available, meaning you can do nothing. Here's what's going to happen. You can do this and here's what's going to happen, how much it's going to cost you, or you can do this and here's the upside to doing that. This is where now we start to move towards introducing our solution, but not just yet. I know, I know you want to talk about your solution. You want to talk about your company, but not just yet. So again, we have our intro. We have the slide that kind of puts the big, the big idea in front of them. The slide number three is going to be deepening their understanding of the problem and, and demonstrating your competency. Slide four is explain the economic impact. Now we're moving into slide five. You would think we're ready to talk about the solution, but not just yet. As soon as you get somebody thinking about making a buying decision, they immediately start assessing options. And so this is where you have an opportunity to preemptively talk about the different options that are available in whatever it is that you're selling. And a lot of salespeople are afraid to do this. A lot of companies are afraid to do this. They don't want to talk about the competition. And my sales mentors always taught me to never, never put down the competition. But instead, what you want to do is you want to basically say in this slide five, you want to say, this is the available options. And if you care about this, you should go with that company. And if you care about this and these things, and you want to have this economic outcome, you should go with our option. So you want to demonstrate that your option is superior and you still have not yet talked about your products, features, and benefits or your company, right? You really haven't gotten into the, the details yet. So after all of these slides, now we're at slide six, right? Then you finally introduce the details of your solution and you go into more depth. Then in the next slide, I want you to provide them with a testimonial or an example of where this solution was successfully implemented. This is in essence going to be telling the, the customer, I understand you. I understand the problem. I've demonstrated my competency. I've showed you the economic impact. I've talked about the options and why it's hard to solve the problem. I've moved into our solution. And now I'm going to show you that I've helped others just like you achieve the transformation and the benefits of our solution. Thank you so much, Kara. I really appreciate you commenting. This is awesome. Great engagement for the audience today. Thank you. Okay. So we are now at the end of our, of our pitch, right? We've walked them through all these steps. And this is where most times we would then lean towards the customer, metaphorically speaking, and ask for the business. This is not the step that you're going to take. You're going to do something that's going to really surprise your, your potential customer. You're going to explain to them that there are requirements to doing business with you and your company. And this is exactly what the requirements are. In essence, you're going to metaphorically lean away from them at this point. At this point. And what this does is this evokes curiosity and it causes the prospect to lean in towards you. And then you're going to ask a very important question. So this is in slide nine, right? We've, we've now talked about the requirements and now you're going to ask this one question. How do you see our solution working in your business? And then please do not speak again. Smile warmly. Endure the uncomfortable silence. Let the prospect think about everything that they've learned in, in, a, in a way that they have rarely heard any salesperson ever present this kind of information before. They may need a couple seconds to actually think about it. How would this solution work in my business? What they say next may come across as some objections. But as one of my mentors always said, objections are the signposts that lead you to the sale. 
What I have found in my experience doing this and using this method is when we get to this part of the of the conversation, what they say is often the exact information we're looking for to help us to move and close the sale. They may tell you that there are budgetary restraints or that there is an additional layer of approval that is needed or that there is a competing product line that is uh, not necessarily a competitor to you but is a competitor in which one do they take on first, right? Which line do they change first? They're, they're, all this wonderful information is going to come from that question of how do you see the solution working in your business? And so there's some real psychological upside to one, instead of asking for the business, explain to them that, that there's actually requirements doing business with you, which is something they're not going to expect. And then you ask them how they see the solution working in their business, and they're going to have to tell you something. Then you can flip to your last slide, which is your contact information, your company logo, and you can engage in a meaningful conversation with the customer working through some of these objections. And the most important thing is even if you aren't able to close the sale right then and there, I want you to ensure that you get a next step so that everybody understands where they stand. And you want to have the attitude that there are many customers that you are looking to serve. And if this person is not particularly serious about doing business with you, you're completely prepared to move on. And you, you, know, you don't have to be rude about that, but you want to express that. That's a high status move. That, that, that elevates your status in the minds of your prospects. And really, isn't doing business with you serious? It should be. If it's not, why are you even there? So since doing business with you is serious business, you should be serious about taking next steps. This is the structure of a very powerful, very concise pitch that you can use in a virtual sales situation. And you can also think about this structure and you can use this in an in a face-to-face -face meeting as well, where you don't, you're not relying on the slides. You're just walking people through this architecture of a conversation. And this is how you can sell a lot more heavy-duty parts. And this is just one of the many important parts of adding a digital sales channel to your entire business. So it's not just about online marketing. It's not just about e-commerce. It's also about alignment between what you're doing in the digital world and how you're communicating directly with real people using virtual tools, of course, to help you with that. I hope that you've taken great benefit from this. And this is our 16th week in a row of talking about how to sell more heavy duty parts in a digital world. And we are going to be moving on now into an area of, of business where we're going to really analyze the four stages of digital transformation in a company. So that's what we're going to start talking about next week. I look forward to talking to you. Thank you so much for uh, all of the comments today. And I really appreciate the ongoing support. We will talk to you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.